article. I don't know if I have it, but it's on my screen. Uh, it's an article from The Lever about the vinyl chloride catastrophe in East Palestine, Ohio, um, which is located somewhere in or around Beaver County. I just, I want to go to Beaver County because I love beavers, you know. I watched this video the other day of like a beaver that was like inside, like living inside and they were trying to make like a dam out of like Christmas presents. That shit was awesome. Anyway, enough about beavers. Uh, this is from levernews.com. Quote, there will be more derailments is the headline. And uh, this is a photograph of the vinyl chloride catastrophe and Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Now, for those of you that don't know, Pete Buttigieg is the government, the executive branches, secretary, as in the person in charge, the boss, of the Department of Transportation, the people that issue safety rules on railway stuff, you know. Uh, also factor in, the railway unions were asking for paid sick leave a couple of months ago. The federal government stepped in using a dumb law from the 1920s and said, you get no sick days, no sick days for you. You have to work when sick. What do you think happens when people work when sick? What do, okay, so there's two things here. One, the Department of Transportation has way to lax safety standards. So they're transferring and uh, or transporting extremely large amounts of extremely flammable and explosive chemicals. Um, and then two, everyone who's working there is sick and can't stay home to recover. So you have sick people, low safety standards. And what is Pete Buttigieg gonna do? What is the Department of Transportation gonna do? Well, that's what this article is going to be about. So let's read. In the aftermath of a fiery Ohio train derailment, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg's department has not moved to reinstate an Obama-era rail safety rule aimed at expanding the use of better braking technology. Even through, even though a formal federal, former federal safety official recently warned Congress that without better brakes, there will be more derailments and more releases of hazardous materials. So again, this is why voting for Republicans and letting them get in charge is such a bad deal because Democrats are fucking morons. Now wrap your head around that one, okay? So Barack Obama, during his time in office, right, he issued the Department of Transportation to have higher safety standards, right? When Donald Trump became president, he removed those rules. His Department of Transportation removed those rules. Right? Joe Biden jumping in with the Build Back Better. Remember the bipartisan infrastructure plan? Right? At any point, Joe Biden could have issued the Department of Transportation to reauthorize the Obama rules. Now, again, this is an executive branch thing that they can do with the executive branch. It's just like a rule internally that the president and the secretary in this instance uh, put forward. But they didn't. So, Let's, this is what happens in politics when it comes to Republican Democrat. Republicans join office. They take five steps back. Democrats take one step forward and then pretend like they just, they're, they're like, you know, they're Jonah Salk, right? Like they're the, they just solved the universe and they saved everyone's lives. Republicans take office five more steps back. Democrats take office. They take one more step forward. Holy shit. We're like the modern incarnation of Harriet Tubman. We are the most beautiful angels. We are Mother Teresa times 10, right? And they don't actually do anything. They could have, but they chose not to. And now even with this disaster having taken place, they're still choosing not to because they don't give a fuck. Instead, transportation regulators have been considering a rail industry backed proposal that could weaken existing brake safety rules. Most of the nation's freight trains, including the Norfolk Southern train that derailed in Ohio, continue to rely on a Civil War era braking system.
I'm just gonna let that one sink in for you. Norfolk Southern belongs to a lobby group that successfully pressed Donald Trump to repeal a 2015 rule requiring newer safety electronic braking systems in some trains transporting hazardous materials. The Department of Transportation's most recent regulatory agenda, which lists all planned, proposed, and final rules, does not include an ECP brake rule. When asked if the better braking technology would have reduced the severity of the Ohio accident, Stephen Dittmayer, a former senior official at the Federal Railroad Administration, said yes. Though the Obama administration did originally enact a rule requiring those better brakes on some trains, its regulators sided with lobbyists and ignored the National Transportation Safety Board's request that the safety rules apply to all rail cars carrying the kinds of dangerous flammable chemicals on board the Ohio train. Under the rules weakened by both the Obama and Trump administration's decisions, the train was not being regulated as a high hazard flammable train. So what, what's happening here? So there's a couple different things here. We got brakes. We got staffing shortages, so there's less people staffing these trains in case of an emergency to be able to react accordingly in time. So we have staff, sh staff shortages, brake systems from the 1850s, and then the other aspect, what are being carried on the trains? Well, having, you know, let's say, now I, I use this when it comes to water, right? This is my example when it comes to the EPA, when it comes to water, is the legal limits for heavy metals and water are significantly, in some instances, when it comes to PFAS, we're talking about like 10,000 times delta, but the legal limits are significantly higher than the safety limits, right? So again, any amount of poison, the poison is in the dose, right? If you consume a metric shit ton of vinyl chloride, it's going to destroy your fucking lungs and tear your body apart from the inside. If you get like one small like speck, one particle in an otherwise, you know, gorgeous, very high air quality afternoon, you're not even going to sweat. It's not going to affect you. The poison is in the dose, right? So when it comes to the EPA in water, right, the safety limit when it becomes poisonous is oftentimes in some instances, I know with PFAS, it's about a 10,000 times delta. Um, but a lot of the times the health limit is way lower than what the legal limit is because the legal limit is not designed around making sure you're safe. It's designed around making sure that they don't have to update their systems and technology. So it's the same issue with the trains, right? So as we get better and better at transporting and compacting and compressing these highly dangerous uh, materials, um, we can transport more of it at a time. And all it takes, again, if there were half of the vinyl chloride um, on this train, when this derailment occurred, the situation would have been half as bad. If there was a third, a quarter, a fifth of the vinyl chloride present, the situation would have been whatever corresponding fraction as bad. But again, the legal limits for how much they're allowed to carry, essentially, it there is no legal limit. They can just carry however much they want, right? And again, let's assume there is a derailment. Is that really going to affect their bottom line? An entire city in Ohio are essentially not allowed to go home because if they do, they're going to develop lung cancer and die. And even if they were allowed home or when they are allowed home, it's not going to be when it's safe. It's going to be when it's politically expedient and the best time for them to declare victory would be, right? So it's a disaster and the government's going to do nothing. They don't give a shit. You know, a lot of people refer to these trains as bomb trains because that's what they are. One wrong move and, in its, and, and it's an explosion. And that's a, pretty much exactly what happened. So, let's keep reading. Though the Obama administration did originally enact a rule requiring those better brakes on some trains, its regulators side with lobbyists and ignored the blah, blah, blah. Under the rules weakened by both the Obama, Obama and Trump administration's decision, the train was not being regulated as a high hazard flammable train. Now, again, I already read that, but the point is, it's, it, it is a high hazard flammable train. It is. I mean, as we can see, you look at what happened. It obviously was, but it wasn't classified as that. How is that possible? 
because the legal system is not necessarily designed to follow the rules of the English language. The English language, interpreting and speaking and being able to comprehend the English language when it comes to the legal system is optional, doesn't matter, right? So the legal system can have a situation where, you know, they will tell you that's not a high hazard flammable train. How do you define high? How do you define hazard? How do you define flammable? Oh, ho, ho, ho. and then they'll fucking do a song and dance while they're trying to gaslight you into thinking, oh yeah, that train that blew the fuck up and had like a smoke cloud that like we fucking like flew over several states. Yeah, that wasn't actually a high hazard flam. Then what would be a fucking high hazard flammability train? Like Jesus fucking Christ, right? Senator Sherrod Brown told The Lever in a statement that the NTSB, quote, should tell Congress that the Federal Railroad Administration uh, and the Federal Railroad Administration that measures need to be put in place to avert accidents that allow hazardous materials to spill or catch fire in our communities. Sherrod Brown added, railroads should not use their lobbyists to block or weaken common sense safety measures that protect workers and communities. Buttigieg, who heads the Department of Transportation that oversees the railroads, has not said anything about the Ohio train derailment. It's not crazy, by the way. It would be like, remember that Chinese spy balloon bullshit? Right? It would be like if the Secretary of State didn't mention it. Like if Anthony Blinken was like being asked about it at a press conference, spy balloon, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, Compare the situation to the, to the Chinese spy balloon. The relevant secretary in this instance, Secretary of State or Defense, they would freak the fuck out. Now, whether or not you think that's fair or not, I think there was a gross exaggeration, you know? Now let's compare the threat. A balloon in the sky versus a gigantic explosion of toxic chemicals that created a plume in the sky that traveled across several states. <laughs> One of them... We get the military involved. The other one, it's been a week and no one no one in the relevant authority position has even mentioned it at all. <laughs> crazy shit, man. That's crazy shit. I don't know what to tell you. We live in shit fuck land. Yeah. Anyway, you can read the rest of this. Um it basically just goes on to say there will be more issues and no one's going to do anything. So again, we just have to watch as the country basically assassinates its own people through negligence and corruption. And what are we going to do about it? What, are, what is the option? What do, what do Americans do about this? Well, we're certainly not going to vote for better politicians. Why would we? We're too dumb. We're certainly not going to do protests. Why would we bother? We got Netflix to watch. We're certainly not going to occupy any sort of governmental institutions. Pfft. I got to watch the award shows for my favorite musicians, you know? We got content to consume. We got products to buy. We can't be doing any of this shit to fix our country. So anyway, for everyone else, we just have to sit back and watch these politicians assassinate us in legal we, uh, means. And that's all we got to do. We have nothing else. We have no recourse. No recourse whatsoever. So, anyway.